each of us like hey <laughs> <laughs> oh come on we started on that gotcha. that's fun what else what else would you want to start on <laughs> zach with zach with the gotcha all right hey welcome everybody welcome to uh gumpa talk episode 40 uh the hobby the word hobby becomes redefined Ooh, that's actually uh, it. So we're gonna talk what's that i won't take credit for like being too clever with that that's actually a reference to to a song if anyone in the comments gets that then shout it out but i didn't entirely come up with that hey you know what i love your titles man they're always witty and, and catchy and better than what i could do so praise be to the titles <laughs> so what's going on guys welcome to uh Gumpa talk I am one of uh, your amazing co-host, Tim, the one and only shot of Mecca. With me, as always, we have an amazing crew of uh, modelers, and uh, we talk about Gumpla stuff. So uh, this month, we're going to be talking um, kind of what the word hobby means to us, and we're going to give uh, some reactions to uh, the New York Times article, um, the uh, one entitled In Praise of Mediocrity. Um, so we're going to talk about that here a little bit in um, the coming minutes. But first, we always have a routine. Um, I know there are some a, a bunch of people actually in the chat right now who are tuning in for the first time. So Hello. welcome. Um, that's awesome. I love to see that, right? Um, but let's go around. Let's introduce everybody just real quick. It's just the three of us right now. Uh, hopefully, Simon and Justin will uh, log on here um, soon. But uh, if not, we'll just keep rolling. Uh, let's start down under with our good friend, Josh. Josh, introduce yourself every to everybody. Hey, guys and ladies. I am Josh Rodera. I live in Australia. And you may have seen me from entering GBWC or posting little paper houses online. I do mm. Gundam drawings as well. And I sell those. And I'm on this show with these boys. And it's really fun. And that's the end of my intro. <laughs> the paper houses are awesome. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The paper I don't houses know. are great. Did, did, I, did I mention this last time we were talking, Josh? Uh, last time did you get one? About this? No, it's not a house, but it's one of these paper theaters. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen photos of those. Um, they're probably super fun to put together. Yeah, I haven't put it together, obviously. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> what is it? Does your phone go in there or something? No, no, no. It's, uh, I don't know if you can see. It's just these different layers, and you kind of like stack it up, and it makes like a 3D image. Neat. Sort of like a, a diorama, like a flattened paper diorama. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's not going to focus. The camera's too focused on my backlog there. But anyway. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. damn. <laughs> uh, it's from uh, just from this movie, uh, Wolf Children. Pretty good huh. movie. Oh, yeah, Wolf Children. Seen it. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Like that. Yeah, probably, probably a lot cheaper than the, the Sankai paper houses. Yeah, I think it was like about 15 bucks or something. So. Oh, yeah, that's better than wow. 50. Yep, that's yeah. good. Oh, my God, you spent $50 on those paper houses. Man, I'm yeah. telling you, the fun the wow. fun for the hour is is like it's it's insanely tipped in the fun direction. Yeah. I yeah. never would have thought 50 bucks for a little paper house. Yeah. That's quality, though. Like, yeah. yeah. It's wow. just it's, in, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy moly. All right. Well, hey, on that note, <laughs> let's go to Zach. Zach. Introduce Yo. yourself to everybody, man. I'm Zaku Aurelius, and currently I'm pretty much just doing reviews at the moment, but I do have other stuff in the works. Uh, I think I mentioned to you guys, I don't know if I mentioned this live or if I just mentioned to, mentioned it to you guys when we were not live, but uh, I was going to be interviewing Kieran Hanmade. Uh, yeah. Oh, cool. I just wanted to mention about this because we did our interview, but unfortunately the audio like so there was some problem with the audio so oh. we're gonna have to redo it and so we're just gonna no. uh we're gonna take a page out of uh, bill o'reilly's book and we're just gonna do it live tomorrow. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, so this time tomorrow, uh this time tomorrow uh, i'll be streaming again joined by kieran and we'll just be doing a interview live at that time so hopefully there won't be any issues and we'll finally be able to get this interview out for you guys it's been like a couple, few months in the works but yeah oh, uh, so uh, the interview and then uh, other stuff coming uh, along the way that are not review videos in the near future so stay very cool. that's, uh, cool. that's what i'm doing yeah. that sucks about the audio though i've i've had that happen <sighs> on like pro shoots 
mm. and there's no worse feeling. It's, it's just annoying. Yeah. It's so annoying. <clears throat> oh, man. When it's like, well, that's happened a couple of times, like when I'm shooting like a review or unboxing video or something, just like normal video, and I'll, I'll just voice over it. Mm -hmm. It's easy enough, but like when it's, obviously it's the two of us talking for an hour and 20 minutes, I can't, <laughs> can't do a voiceover for both of us for an hour and 20 minutes. Remember, uh, we're really talking about, obviously. So, yeah. Were you able to work out what the problem to was? Try voice. <laughs> what the problem was? Uh, yeah, I think what the problem was my mic wasn't plugged in all the way or something. Uh, the, uh, 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 on this on this guy here, this yep, uh, yep. cord was just a little bit out. So oh. yeah. it was yeah. good for like the first eight minutes. I was like plugging along, just like editing it a little bit. And mm -hmm. then it oh. was like, oh, oh. Yeah. does that continue oh. through the whole thing? And like, yes. To, yep. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wait. The end. oh, geez. Yeah. Man, we just got a uh, just an update for everybody. We just got a message from Simon. Uh, Simon is sick and he will not be joining us. He says he sounds like Barry White, even though I think that would be extremely entertaining to have <laughs> a, an English Barry White on. Uh, we wish Simon the best and uh, hope he feels better. So mm -hmm. Simon, unfortunately, will not be with us this month, you guys. So um, yeah, make sure you... Like Huh? He could like he could like log into a, a like a voice bot website or something and type in and be part of the show. Like <laughs> I am Simon from Gundam UK or something like that. Right. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> like I said, I'd, I'd still love to hear uh, English Barry White. <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, hello. <laughs> Jolly good. That would be awesome. Anyway, I digress. Uh, but go to um, Gundam UK's uh, Facebook page, Instagram, whatever. Wish Simon the best, you guys. Uh, hopefully he feels better. And uh, we'll catch back up with him next month. So good stuff there. Um, just real quick, before we uh, talk about what each one of us is working on, I do want to update you guys on three uh, things, three very important things. Uh, two of them are guests that we've had on in the past, uh, some comings and goings of them, and then also an update on the Gumpla Talk uh, fundraiser slash giveaway, because we need to talk about that here for just a few minutes. But first of all, um, our good friend uh, Clay Scholz Geller, uh, admin of it's a Gundam uh, group uh, was recently married. So congratulations to Clay um, on uh, on getting married. That was awesome to see. Uh, and then also, also um, our friend uh, Irad, uh, owner of the Gundam Kitchen, um, just opened his new store yesterday. Uh, and it looks really awesome. So uh, congratulations to both of those guys for those important milestones. Um, that was really, really awesome to see both of those. Um, but for you guys, uh, the Gumpla Talk <coughs> fundraiser slash giveaway. Uh, there has been some new added prizes. So if mm -hmm. you guys are not familiar with what we have going on right now, let me fill you in just real quick. So one lucky winner will win a perfect grade as tray red frame. Um, sent to you free of charge anywhere in the world. This is open to everybody. Um, for those of you watching in Singapore, there's a hurdle. Uh, contact us. We'll try to help you out. But everybody else, clear going. Um, we also got uh, the six of the little resin um, kind of super deformed busts from our good friend, Wynn, uh, the paint pusher on Facebook. Uh, so we're going to be giving six of those away to lucky donors. Uh, and then also, <clears throat> I was contacted here recently from a couple of guys uh, that have some online stores, and they donated some prizes to us as well. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Gentleman by the name, uh, he goes by Dwidget on uh, YouTube, but he goes by uh, Therno Hobbies and Games on Facebook. Uh, he sent us two limited edition kits um, and then also a uh, Master Grade Providence Gundam edition kit. So we're going to be giving all three of those away too. And then in addition to all that, 
um another good friend on um youtube he goes by ace schultz on youtube burkanateer on facebook uh he runs it's a gundam sales on facebook he's going to be donating some stuff as well here very soon and um i think all of the shipments went out uh either yesterday or the day before uh and in that um from what i understand is going to be a p bandai polypod and also some bmc chisels uh mm. to give away too mm. so man if you guys have not donated yet and entered, um, now, right now is the time to do it because the prizes are stacking up. So the chances of you winning something are just that much bigger. So um, go to www.gofundme slash Gumpla Talk and uh, give what you can. You know, the there's no minimum. There's no maximum to give. Um, the more uh, you give, the more we get to give to an awesome charity where, like I said earlier, we're collecting money for the National Alopecia Arietta Foundation, um, which is an amazing charity. And um, just do something that makes you feel good, warms your heart. Hey, so, I don't know about that, Tim. I actually got, uh, let, let me, I, I could just paraphrase it. I was going to look up the actual comment, but I just got a comment on my last uh Complete news video where I mentioned about that from someone who is, is stage three. Oh uh, wow! Okay. Of, of that uh, uh, particular disease, okay. and he, he said thank you to us for, awesome. for doing that. So I, I don't forget. I forget his name, but uh, it's cool yeah, to hear cool. from. I mean, it's un, I, it's not cool that he has that disorder, yeah. but it's cool to know that there's like people who are actually definitely you know benefiting from that. So. Yeah, definitely. Hopefully. We hope so. That's really cool, man. Mm -hmm. That's that cool. Hearing feed feedback like that kind of warms your heart, you know? Yeah. So that's really cool. That's really cool. So guys, again, um, www.gofundme.com slash gumpla talk. Go there, donate what you can. Uh, if you're not in the position to donate, we completely understand. If you could give us a share on whatever social media that you can and help get us the word out there. Um, the uh, deadline, we're, we're cutting this off. We've already gone over um, three months at this point. We're cutting it off at the end of this month. So October 31st, that's the last day to enter. Um, so there's not much time. There's 11 days left on this campaign. So go share it. Uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, make a YouTube video. Make a Snapchat. I don't give a shit. Whatever it is, mm -hmm. go and share the link to somebody that you know um, might be interested in uh, winning some really cool prizes. So, who doesn't like prizes? I know, right? Who doesn't like prizes? Come on. <laughs> and it's a, it makes you feel good. And if you win a prize, man, it's a win-win, right? Come on. That's so. YouTube. That's YouTube one hundred and one. Give away some free stuff, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Man, oh man. All right, cool. So, hey, uh, you guys, let's talk about what each one of us is working on. Let's start with Josh. Josh, what are you working on, buddy? What have I been working on? I haven't been doing much Gumpla. Um, I've been doing, you guys ever play Magic the Gathering, the card game? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I do yeah, not. So this, is now, this is now a Magic the Gathering um, podcast. Um, no, I never played. I used to play Pokemon when I was younger and stuff and a little bit of Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, and um, have you played any cards like that, uh, Tim? I have not. I that was they came a little bit after mm. my formative years. Let's put it that way. Yeah. So it's real fun. You just buy a bunch of cards and you make your own deck. Choose you want like dragons and stuff. And I'm I'm playing with my friend Matt. Um, and we sat down at like ten thirty the other night. His kids were in bed, and we stopped at like two thirty. So it's just four hours of straight playing, hand after hand of this game. Uh, and I can <laughs> see why everybody loves it. It's 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 super super fun. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've been playing that. Um, and then I also got, have you guys seen this little little robot guy um, named oh. Vector? Oh, neat. Oh. Yeah. He's a little, he's like a little, kind of like a little Wally sort of thing. Um, and they've got him little animated eyes on the front here. Um, and he's kind of like a, an Alexa, like Google Alexa or something like that, where you can um, ask him questions or get him to do stuff. Um, so uh, you say, um, hey, Vector. And then you say, I have a question. Hey, Victor. I have a question. Oh, it's not working. Darn it. You know, we can ask. Okay, let me, let me try. Let me try one more. One more time. Okay. Hey, Victor. Hey, Victor. I have a question. Oh. 
Okay, it's really not working. Cool. I was going to ask him what Gundam was. He told me what Gundam was before. But anyway, he's a cool little <laughs> robot and, um, and he drives around on your desk. He's always connected and stuff. And um, he doesn't like being held. Okay, you're fine. Um, and um, <laughs> if you leave him out, um, he'll drive and park himself in his charger when he runs low on battery. Um, nice. So he'll keep himself charged all the time. Um, so yeah, he's a fun little toy. So I'm going to get some, you can download the SNK and do like programming <laughs> and stuff. Um, so that's a, that's a fun little toy. Yeah. Oh my that's gosh. Awesome. Okay, he's freaking out. What is he doing? Okay, that didn't work at all. That was I, I practiced that before we got on the show, and he was gonna he's gonna help me out. So anyway, so I've been playing with him. So that's been good fun. Yeah, but that's it's cool. it's funny they've, they've they've animated him heaps, so he's got all the little little quirks and little bleeps and boops. Um, and if I leave in the morning and I don't say goodbye to him, I kind of feel bad, which is stupid because he's just little, he's just a little robot. I know he's just like a little camera sensor and like uh, microphones, but um, yeah, we're funny humans. How we anthropomorphize. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. So yeah, that's been fun. Very cool. Any think, any new projects on the way? Uh, new projects? Um, no, nothing really on the way. I'm building um, the. I got the. What is it? The extra finish tall geese, the limited one from Gunnam Expo. Um, oh, cool. Or the Expo Limited when we had the GBWC. So I built a leg and a little thruster pod, um, and that's really fun to do. Um, super nice finish on the white. I haven't built any extra finish kits um, with white armor before, so um, so that's been fun. Yeah, but that's it. So, no, not too many projects. Playing a lot of video games. A really scary Resident Evil VR game, which is terrifying. So uh -huh. terrifying. <laughs> yeah, so I've been filming myself playing that. Um, and um, it just feels like you're trapped in this old mansion and there's people coming at you from behind stairs and stuff. And I'm swearing so much. And I have, I have to stop after about an hour because it's actually that scary. Um, so, But I've been filming myself and man, it's been some good Let's Play kind of content. So I might edit a little video together to show you guys. It's, it's a lot of swearing and me screaming like a, a really high-pitched voice little little boy. Yeah. Oh my God. Those, those VR videos that you sent us. <laughs> Um, and uh, mind you, for those of you in the audience, they are not for public consumption. They are just for laughs yeah. for the Gumplet Talk <laughs> guys. But let, let me uh, assure you, they are hilarious. So, dude, yeah, I want to see some of the, I want to see some more of those. Those are great. Yeah, it's good fun. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, Zach, what are you working on, man? Uh, I'll tell you, but I, 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 damn, I know. I think we need to have an intervention with Josh is having like a midlife crisis. He got a pet. He's playing oh, the gathering. <laughs> just, this is it, that was that was so funny to me, especially just because just last night I was reading this article uh, from the hardtimes.net, which is like a like the Onion, basically. Mm -hmm. As just just last night, a friend of mine posted an article about this. It's titled "Recently Divorced Man Flicks Metaphorical Cigarette into Gasoline by Buying Magic the Gathering Starter Pack." <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, that's so good. Cause yeah, the like, did you guys ever collect uh, trading cards like basketball or baseball or anything? I did yeah. Pokemon, of course. I, I did. Oh, that. Pokemon, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you collected cards, Tim? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Back in the day, baseball cards, football, everything. Yeah. Because yeah. I just remember like, getting my pocket money and going to the card shop and buying that, and just and you're like going through the pack really slowly to see if you get mm. one of the inserts. And oh, yeah. now I'm just like, it was just gambling for kids. Oh my yeah. gosh. So yeah, um, but that's that's funny. Yeah, you buy one booster pack and you're like, oh, maybe I'll just buy another one. Yeah, just 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 to treat myself. No, <laughs> you have to watch it. Yeah, <laughs> it is kind of interesting how like these days it's like a big topic about uh, like microtransactions in games. Is it gambling yeah, yeah. or not? But, like cards have been a thing like forever. Is that not like the same thing? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yep. Because they're randomly inserted and you're not guaranteed anything. Yeah. 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 Mm. I mean, hell, they they have professional leagues for these things too. So. It's even taken up a notch. So, yeah, I'm probably going to get that good. So I might have to stop entering GBWC soon, guys. It was it was a good ride while it lasted. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like customizing my cards, like Go painting them and stuff. Something else, yeah. huh? Yeah. <laughs> nice. so just start scribing on your cards. Oh my yeah, God. Right. And they're like, "Sir, you can't bring this in. This has been modified." And I'm like, yeah, "I know, but how good is it? Can I get the trophy?" <laughs> yeah. Nope. No place. <laughs> nope. Yeah. <laughs> oh man nice uh what am i working on actually now that you uh, you you as you just not too long ago mentioned i'm actually at the moment just building up the polypod ball oh look at that how yeah. is it uh at the moment it's just the ball i haven't built the legs yet which is kind of oh, I got part of it so i mean but it is my first time ever building a master ball and it is really cool uh cool. I like it a lot. every time uh, i see the inner frame on that i'm like oh i gotta build one of those that looks like fun yeah, right it is very cool 
Uh, so that's cool. That the only thing that I don't like about it is that it does include some of the like the really soft rubber parts, mostly which are kind of like hidden inside. But like, it's just gross, impossible. But uh, I showed you guys last time my perfect grade strike, uh, and I also just finished this guy, which you guys have seen. I sent a picture to you, but uh, this is another commission that I just finished. My last one, kind of for the time being, aside from my deep striker for USA Gundam store, but. Here we go, the Gundam 05. Love this kid, Pretty it's nice. a lot of fun. Uh, it's my second time. I, When I first got into painting, uh, the 04 and the 05 were a couple of the very first kits that I painted. Uh, that so, turned out so nice. Yeah. I like it a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. So we decided to just kind of have the the big Gatling gun just slung on the back. I, I, I prefer it just there, it's fine. Yeah, Actually it's cool. Like some action pose, but then I had this little base that I made for it as well. Uh, just this simple little thing here, just with that on there. That's nice. all. And it's just a like little two dollar wood tray, like from the dollar store, and then just plot plate just fits in there like that. Nice. There you go. Easy peasy. What was that? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, there's that. Um, and then just have a few things built, uh, and a few things that are ready to be painted. Uh, now that those two projects are done, uh, and I have like a bunch of other stuff in the works, I'm feeling like I'm maybe almost getting a little burnout, but I don't think so. Still not quite yet. But just burnout last night on commissions I, or no, um, just or just like building, working on yeah, just like working on stuff. But yeah, I think it's just because I've been a little bit sick lately and kind of like extra tired, so I'm just like kind of. Where normally when it gets like to the late hours at night, I feel like I, I still want to work more. But like for the past week or so, I've been finding it a little bit easier to just go to bed a little earlier than normal. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know if it's really like feeling a little bit burnout or if I'm just sick. So I think I'm just yeah, sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, probably um, just sick. Yeah. Man. But uh, yeah, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of stuff that I'm working on. A couple of things that are just not really things that I've uh, built, but I can just give you kind of from my review queue of things that I, I've built. I recently just built up uh, the Moon Gundam this past week, and a lot of people have been going crazy over that. I can say it is really good. It's a really cool. super nice HD for sure. Uh, and then the Ari Yakudoga as well, built that up this week. Oh, yeah. uh, I quite like it a lot. There's been a lot of mixed opinions about that online, I know. Just, I don't know, as, as it goes. It's not a master grade, so. People are upset about that. Uh, I, I don't know if you build it and you're aware of the fact that it's not a master grade, then I don't think you're going to be disappointed by it. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I was it's, hoping it was good. Okay. Yeah. It's very, it's very big. So it's yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that, that's pretty much it that I'm working on at the moment. Uh, so working on trying to work on some new shirt designs too, but that's another thing I'm being like a little bit lazy about or just, I haven't had the time to do it yet, but uh, Advanced Zeta shirts. Oh man! Nice. Oh yes! Oh yes! Cool. Yep, 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 yep. So yeah, you've just, cool. just been waiting until Bandai released some Advanced Zeta kits, like with the Hazels and Advanced Hazels. You're like, okay, now I'll, I'll release my Hazel, my Advanced Zeta shirts now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Actually, no, I don't know. No, uh, I'm just joking, but yeah, no, it's actually brought on at first by. Um, uh, once uh, an artist, builder, Gumpla builder slash artist that I follow on Instagram was sharing some uh, drawings, and I, I got in touch with him. I said, "Hey, would you want to like do a collaboration and put those on on some shirts?" And he said, "Yeah." So it'd be a couple of drawings from him, uh, and okay. then a couple of shirts that I'm working on as well. But they're all uh, advanced Zeta themed. So, oh man, that sounds that sounds good. Yeah, That's neat. Uh, Can never have too much advanced of Zeta. Right. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yes. Well, thank what you. What have you been building, Timbo? Oh. Uh, normally, I don't have anything to actually show Ooh. because uh, it's always in the studio, but. <laughs> Damn it. Boom. Hmm. Ooh. Here's my Jesta. Look at that. Now, for those of you that don't follow. Um, you know me on social or uh, don't follow the live streams um, every Monday Wednesday and Friday um, I build for two hours and show you basically kind of walking through every little bit of this guy 
Mm -hmm. And um, let me get this turned around and just kind of show you the back of the shield. Hopefully that comes through. Mm -hmm. Nice serrated edge all mm -hmm. along the shield. Mm -hmm. So that's fun. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, this whole backpack here and this little wiry thing, I am going to airdrop this thing. So he's suspended. Uh, there's magnets throughout this thing, and it holds the weight perfectly. Just this one back point here holds that entire model. <laughs> but um, I'm going to have two. There's two other support points that um, magnetize right here on this uh, collar uh, around the head. And uh, it's going to be a, basically a three-point system. And I'm going to have four parachutes, two um, connected to this back point, and then one each on either shoulder. And four big parachutes suspended from a support arm uh, on a base that I'm going to be building hopefully later today. And uh, yeah, mm -hmm. so that is uh, going to be an airdropped parachuting Jesta. So uh, yeah. It's going cool. to be ready for GBWC? Uh, this isn't going GBWC. This is going <laughs> SDGMC. Um, so right. Southern California Gun to Modeling Competition. <laughs> You that not are, that are unaware uh i'm actually going to be out there in november um so if you're in the uh anaheim area man come out uh because um it's an awesome awesome time um we're going to be putting i'm going to be putting on a, a scratch build demo uh for like an hour <laughs> out there and uh man it's just it's an awesome awesome fun time uh put on like i said by our good friends those gundam guys uh we just did a lot a builder stream the other night which was just an insane amount of fun if you guys haven't had a chance to watch that yet oh definitely definitely go back and, and watch it because it's so much fun so when you get you know a handful of smart ass builders uh on a stream just building and talking shit to one another hilarity ensues so it's great really really good so um that's what i'm working on so still a long way to go and i've got less than a month to uh get it all done but uh the core gesta is pretty much done i'm just working on finalizing the the details on the backpack uh and then uh, i know bailey he's in the chat um he had mentioned uh the parachutes i'm going to be vacuum forming uh, the parachutes out of uh, styrene sheet. So oh. um, I built up a form out of um, <clears throat> plastic uh, splines and then just kind of put modeling clay between them to give it an actual form and shape. And then I'm going to be vacuum forming those. So a mm. lot of work, but man, I hopefully the presentation will pay off at the end because I've never seen an air dropped mech before. Mm. So mm. hopefully man, it'll be video. awesome. Please film the vacuum forming once you get it working because that's going to be vacuum forming is always fun to watch, but that's going to be fun oh, to yeah. see that video. Yeah. 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 Oh, man. Definitely. So, are you done basically doing all the scribing and details on the Jesta suit itself? On the Jesta, yes. Yes. Oh, like I said, all I, I have, all I have to do is work on the back, the added backpack, the jump pack, and everything. Mm. Um, and one cool thing about this is that I made this completely modular. So, um, trying to not knock into my microphone here. So this backpack here is held on by magnets and it just pops off just mm. like that. And mm. this top part also pops right off. And then what you're left with, come on you, it's magnet. magnet all, well? Yeah, all oh, these are cool. magnetized. So they're N52 level uh, neodymium magnets. So then what you're left with is basically the stock backpack and uh, a normal Jesta, detailed, of course. But I'm pretty this happy. This is such with a that. good, good, good point to be at when you realize you've finished all the detailing on the main mobile suit. <laughs> oh, it's such it. a nice it's, moment. Oh man, it's so yeah. it's so rewarding at that point. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's so rewarding. So, but I'm really happy with this guy. It's a wonderful kit, and it's been an absolute joy to work on and detail and everything so man I, I just i could not be happier this all started um as a uh a test to see if i can just put simple details into this kit mm -hmm. um and mm -hmm. i specifically didn't scratch build anything for the core kit itself um 
or you know reproportionalize or anything like that or heavily modify anything um all of it is just either plating or scribing or just added little details and um like i said i went through pretty much every step of the way on my live stream so um it was just man super rewarding super super rewarding so very fun times but it's cool that it's all, all uh, videoed and people can go back and watch the whole thing if they want yeah That's yeah, cool. yeah 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 so uh, i don't even know how many streams i have at this point you know 20 30 maybe at this point and they're mm -hmm. all two hours a piece so yeah a lot of fun a lot of fun a lot of yeah. good information too so some dudes in the chat were wondering about the color scheme you're going to be using tim ah uh, yeah the color scheme uh is going to be interesting um it's going to be predominantly red um but it's going to have uh shades of light gray um a la gun cannon sort of uh, color scheme in that same vein but not identical um so yeah this one is this one's gonna be cool mm -hmm. um i'm using the uh, color previous red from the 40th anniversary uh mr color line and it's a doozy um is that it, the red from the gun cannon no no it's well it's it's like i said it's it's um the it's a 40th anniversary color so it's uh, you know limited edition yeah. um and it's this deep kind of almost dark really saturated red and it's just kind of evil looking um and then when you you know I, the way i look at it is when you black base and then you put that over top of it in shades oh, it's that's just gonna look vicious i think so um yeah i can't wait to get painting on this guy and then um i've picked out some really cool <clears throat> decals to uh go on this guy and uh yeah i'm pretty psyched about getting to that point so what color It'll be are the going to be? What's that? What color will the sheets be? Um, you know, they're probably just going to be your kind of a standard, um, you know, kind of a nondescript khaki color, maybe oh, yeah. green. Sail color. Yeah, like a sail Ooh, color. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, and it's all held up with steel wire that I got in the, you know, in the B aisle of of a craft store. Mm -hmm. um but it's like seven strands of steel wire braided together and then wrapped in plastic um like a i don't know like a vinyl or something like that so it's insanely strong um and then the magnets are strong to boot so i'm very happy that it uh um mm -hmm. you know holds its weight let's put it that way so mm -hmm. pretty psyched pretty psyched so that's yeah, what i'm working cool. on so, cool idea that's happy. great Thanks. Mm. Thanks, man. All right. So uh, let's take it over to Zach with the news. Let's yep. uh, let's go to that because I think there was some interesting stuff going on, right? Uh, well, there was a <laughs> maybe not. I don't know. Not really, <laughs> uh, well, kind of, but I think we covered it all last month. There was a shitload of stuff last month that we all went through. Yeah, this month, I don't know, maybe not quite as much. There's okay. a few interesting things that I, I pulled up here. Oh, and one more that I just thought of, too. I'll, I'll try to get that, but. Hang on, Joe. Share the window and present. Okay. So ignore the Korean dating application <laughs> advertisements there. Uh, Can you just send me that link? I'm just, just email me that link. Yeah, Thanks. sure. I'll, I'll get you that after the <laughs> night. Uh, the new set of Converge figures was announced. Uh, this is just really cool because of the, the selection here. So we got the Narrative Gundam with the B equipment on it. Of course, Bandai is really pushing the narrative designs quite a lot. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then the Converge Jesta, which the, the cool thing is it comes with the narrative uh, <laughs> headset for that. That's cool. So you, you have a little option part with that. Uh, and F90 Gundam, not as really into the, the one quite as much personally, but mm. that's pretty cool. Stark Dagon, oh, of course, that's going to yes. be nice one. Oh. With the fuel tank there on the back, fuel tanks. So that's awesome. Uh, and then a couple of high mobility type Zaku's, Johnny Riddens and Shima Matsunaga's uh, high mobility type Zaku's there. And I appreciate that they have different, that they're actually a little bit different. Uh, one is the, uh, I think it's R type, right? That has the extra covers on there. The details are just a little bit different on it. Uh, like the front skirt's a little bit different. And they have different bazookas. Johnny Riddens has the regular bazooka and Shima Matsunaga has the big bazooka. 
So that's pretty cool. Usually when they're like just different color swaps like that, there's not actually any real difference between them, but these ones are actually quite different. So Yeah, I love the the hip thrust forward lean. It's just maximized. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> Especially like on the Gundam types when you see like these and because yes. like the feet get so small. It's like, whoa. Uh... Uh, and you could see that especially well uh, in that image that I showed you guys earlier, the comparison with, between the old and the new Phoenix. There's also a P-Bandai uh, Converge Phoenix coming out. And like in the promo images for that, they had a comparison between the uh, old Converge Phoenix and the new version. And it's really quite different. Mm. So. Uh, anyway, there's that's Converge stuff. There is, uh, speaking of Narrative Gundam, there is a uh, different version of the Narrative Gundam with the B PAX equipment on it. Basically just a couple of big funnels on the back, it looks like, and a couple of chopped off Jagan shields on his arms. <laughs> uh, instead of the giant uh, mobile armor that the regular version comes with. So this uh, is just going to be a different equipment version of that sold as a P-Bandai item. I think it's the whole set with the Gundam itself. I don't think that the P-Bandai set is just the equipment. I think it's like the, the whole thing. There's no solid details about that yet, I don't think, in terms of the price. The price will, will tell us what exactly it is. But it's pretty interesting. The funnels are cool. It reminds me of the uh, funnel test type version of the Silver Bullet, which is a pretty cool kit. Uh, and also this one, the Leo, some of the P-Bandai kit, but, uh, Leo, I don't know, I don't know if either of you guys are really big wing fans to start off with, but I don't remember any space type Leos using the flight backpack in the show. I thought the mm, flight yeah, backpack, I, no idea. Yeah. I thought the flight backpack was used like, uh, on earth. So it would have been used by the green color Leos. Ah. But for some reason, this set is purple. Hmm. Anyway, you can always paint Bandai's it, obviously. watching this. Bandai's yeah, watching this, know. and they're like, damn, guys, it's the green one. And he's like, man, what are you doing? Green one, <laughs> not the purple. And they're like, change everything. <laughs> right. Uh, so, so yeah, this, uh, this one comes with the dauber gun and the, uh, the sh uh, shoulder cannons. And the flight backpack and the little uh, things on the side of the legs too, the other kind of like thruster vernier kind of things there. Interesting. Yeah. So it's another version of the uh, Leo. It was expected, but like with the space type, they're doing both the space type and this type. I don't know what, what they're calling this. It's just Leo. I can't, I don't know what that kanji is. So I'm not sure, but. Maybe it's at the top. Leo flight type. There you go. Okay. <laughs> <That's easy enough. laughs> the space type and the flight type, unfortunately, both P Bandai. But relatively cheap. Uh, seven, 1600 yen, 1800 yen. Mm. Uh, also, this is not gun plow related, but uh, the new narrative trailer showed a white version of the uh, Neo's Young in there so probably we can expect to get a p-bandai version of the hg neo Zeon coming out in the mm -hmm. near future so that'll be fun <laughs> yeah that trailer <laughs> looks pretty good yeah yeah speaking of the trailer yeah, I, I i'm quite excited for that it does look good oh there's another image of the uh, b type equipment for that there we go and the neo Zeon. so i don't know looking at that it's kind of hard to tell what is the mobile suit inside of there Oh yeah. From the liner, I can't really tell. I guess it would be the the Shinenju Stein, maybe. Interesting. The narrative uh, version possibly. of the Stein. You mm. might be right. Yeah, because I was gonna say, are they gonna bring out a HG White Shinenju? But no. Mm. It's, it's it's hard to tell. I really can't see that at all. But mm. uh, maybe if someone else has seen online. I, I haven't been following it closely enough to see. I'm sure some people have already already sleuthed it out, but. Uh, oh, it kills me. It kills me when the images are so low quality. Like, just the and then we had like double, double the res. Mm, just the fact that it's like off white like that too. It kind of like matches the stein. So I'd say it's probably mm. a good guess. Probably, yeah, yeah. Mm, but but I'm not sure. Uh, so that'll be fun. 
uh, the Exceed Gundam Heads are finally coming out. Hey. Uh, nice. The uh, regular Gundam, the G3, and the full armor. Now, what I, I was talking with uh, Ricardo a little bit about this. What do you guys think they could possibly do for like a Volume 2 if they end up doing a Volume 2? Because uh, with the Zaku Heads, they don't really have any variation except for the, the Commander Antenna. And so I mm. imagine they'll also do that with this set as well. They won't really have a lot of like physical variations, basically mm -hmm. just colors, color variations. Mm -hmm. So yeah, not really sure where else they could go with that. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, they could do something like um, the uh, like the mud rock or later versions of the seven eight. You know, um, I guess so. family, as long as the will. head's not different at all. Because I mean, yeah, no, the the mud rock I think just has it, and just I could be completely mistaken. I think it's just the faceplate. Um, I, I but I could be wrong. You know, don't you know? Take that with a grain of salt. I imagine the the prototype, uh, not the prototype, the real type color. Would yeah, that too. Because that'd just be mm -hmm. a simple color swap. Yeah. Uh, prototype Gundam maybe as well. The Arc seven eight one. Yeah. Uh, the head I think would be exactly the same on there too. So prototype Gundam, real type color version maybe anyway uh we, we're also considering the uh kind of zero four and zero five kind of along the same lines as the mud rock basically later mm -hmm. in the rx line but just looking at the master grade seeing as i've got it right next to me here i know the side vents on the side of the head are different at least on the master grade anyway okay um they've got like a yellow section on there so i don't know anyway they do look cool though so i'm looking forward to that mm. I like the G3. G3 is so I always love that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, G3 is great. Very cool. Uh, there's those. Uh, and this is just a thing we're, uh, related to... There's a P-Bandai version of... Uh, unfortunately, this this page isn't showing that, but there's a P-Bandai version of the Yakudoga coming out that's the, uh, the Kess Pariah version. The red version is mm -hmm. going to be coming out as a P-Bandai kit. But with that, you can make the Unicorn version kind of uh basically what you need from that kit is just the head and so i guess uh the p bandai kit is coming with the sleeve parts for this arm here uh which mm -hmm. i think you said is like just a part but you have to paint it all yourself it's, it's obviously not any, in any specific, specific color uh and then the head is from the cast prior version as well but in order to make this you have to use the uh the P Bandai Master Grade Giradoga Unicorn version. Oh. <laughs> so you have to buy a different P Bandai kit as well, and then just take the arm, rifle, and backpack from that kit and bash it onto this premium Bandai kit in order oh. to make this particular version, which is pretty annoying. But, wow. Uh, it can be done with that. So that's kind of the deal with this. It's a little bit complicated, but. It's like a build your own figure. It's almost like. Transformers, like the Combiners or uh, mm -hmm. Marvel, with the uh, you know the, how they include like bits of other figures in the entire series, and then you can build oh, yeah. some some bigger figure. Man, normally I, but this I, is like like the Kiradog. The um, Kiradog has already been released, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, <laughs> the, and so they're the the. Unicorn version of the Garadoga, they're re-releasing along with the with Kes Pariah version of the Akadoga so that okay. people can buy them together. Normally, I don't really have a problem with P-Bandai stuff. It's fine. It's just kind of one of those things. You either buy it or you don't. But the fact they have to buy two of them and kit bash them together in order to make this other third variant, I wish they would have just released this on its own as its yeah. own mm. Bandai kit. I would mm. definitely would have bought it. Uh, I think probably what the problem may have been as to why they didn't want to do that is because to to make the rifle, the backpack, and the arm uh, from the Giradoga, they would have had to chop up the Giradoga runners too much or give us way too many leftover parts. Yeah. Using the runners from the Giradoga. I haven't looked at the runners of the Giradoga, so I don't know exactly how they're separated on there. But in order to give us the parts that we need, I think it probably would have been a lot of plastic from that kit. So, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Man. Annoying, but uh, I love that variant so much. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's a shame. <laughs> nice. Uh, and it's like two seconds of screen time in Unicorn before it's instantly blown up. <laughs> cool. I think it'd probably be much easier to just make your own in the HD form. Right. Really. 
Yeah. A much cheaper kit bash. Uh, well, like someone said in the chat, everything's pl uh, uh, possible with uh, plastic, you know? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Just some plastic strip. Do it up. Got your own version. Uh, bada boom, bada bang. This, What's this? This is just a custom build, but the reason why I pulled this up is because I saw this guy, and I wanted to see if we could, if this is a link to his Twitter. Yeah, it is. Hopefully, uh, I I saw this guy share a video on on his Twitter of how he makes these clear parts for his kits, and it was really cool. So I just wanted to share this with you guys if you hadn't seen it. Yeah, cool. Uh, is, is that like hot glue or something, or what is that? No, it's plot plate uh, melted really? with a lighter. What? So he takes uh, a, he takes a sheet of I don't want to I'll, I'll have to scroll through this, forgive me. Uh, oh, is this the guy that was like? Oh, go ahead. Like a week ago, uh, sometime this past week, I saw this video share from him. So hopefully, I'll be able to find it. But I might have to do a little huh. bit of scrolling. So uh, like heating but, it up, heating it up makes it all crinkle and and change its form itself. Yeah, he takes a, a just a sheet of clear plot plate and like cuts it up to like the general shape that he wants to do it. Mm. So it'd be like cut into like a kind of triangular shape and like cut some strips in that, and then he'll just like heat it with a lighter to get it like sort of melted and malleable, and then he'll kind of like pull and stretch it a little bit as he needs to. Yeah, I might just continue scrolling while while we move on, and then once I eventually find it, we'll come back to it. I'll show you guys, but you go. <laughs> it was really. Cool. <laughs> excuse me uh and he's been uh doing this for a few different builds even though i'm not currently seeing any other ones really in here so i don't know uh i'll find it and then we'll come back to that but in the meantime that's kind of it for the news like i said there was a lot of stuff last month so it was not really as much at the moment unless i'm missing something another cool thing that i will just mention though i don't have it pulled up but uh a bootleg company, what's the name of the bootleg company? I forget, is making a 100 scale Zamel. Oh, <laughs> yes. Did you, did you guys see that. that? Yeah. Yeah. It's the same company that made the Zaku tank a couple years ago. Yeah. Is it just me or does uh, it seem a bit small? Because uh, I always thought the Zamel was like really big. Yeah. It looks small. And personally, I don't really like the look of it at all. It just doesn't yeah. really look, doesn't really capture the look quite well. It's very like detailed, which I think a lot of people will be into, but. Motor King, that's what it is. Thanks, Alex. Yeah. Uh, okay. Motor King. And you spell Zamel? X A M E L. Yeah. Okay, I'm just looking it up to refresh my mm -hmm. memory. Yeah. Yeah, it's from um, 0083 Stardust Memories uh, from the first, I guess, what, first episode? Oh, oh the big fat chunky dude. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, sand okay, color cool. one with yeah, the big yeah. cannon on the shoulder and everything. Mm. Yeah. The. Uh, just the way that they've designed it, I think it just doesn't really look that good, to be honest. Um, but it's the first time that that's actually been made in plastic form. There's a few resin kits out there, uh, but as far as I know, there's never been any actual plastic kit of that. Yeah. So, so um, Ricardo in the chat saying that it's 144, not 1 100. So that would make much more oh, sense really? if it was. Yeah. I thought it's. Uh, I thought it was 1 100, but uh, that's no. what he's saying. So. They've just got it stood next to one one hundred scale kits. Yeah, and that's why I thought it looked really small because they have it next to their uh, one one hundred Zaku tank, and it's just a little bit taller, which is not how it is at all. Mm. Uh, uh, but yeah, uh, it's a bit goofy looking. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, yeah. So That's Ricardo it, saying yeah, they, have the, they have the scale wrong on the box is what Ricardo's saying. Uh, so that would make sense. That would make sense. I didn't really like the look of their Zaku tank really t either. So yeah. Uh, if you guys remember that kit, let's see. A little off. I don't think I remember it. Yeah. Is this the tank with just the yeah, Zaku yeah. torso just stuck on top? Yeah. Yeah, 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 basically, it's like a, a Magilla attack yeah. tank. Uh, here we go. I'll just, since we're talking about it, I, I pulled oh, it. Oh, there we go. Yeah. The images here. Yeah. So, yeah, I guess if that's 144 scale, then it should be pretty nice and big. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah. Still not a big fan. 
of the shapes and details on that. It should be more round. It looks like they squared off a lot of areas of it, especially yeah, like yeah, from yeah. the front. It looks very it's, uh yeah. It's such a really it, cool design. I really hope that Bandai does eventually make a, a kit of that. That would yeah. be cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we got the deep striker, they can do this too, you know? Yeah, yeah, I think so. This considering this is something that actually appeared in the anime. Yeah, um, right. Short, but yeah, it's it's it had more screen time than plenty of other kits that have plenty of other designs that have got kits. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right, and it's and it's that just that wonderful ugly boy look mm -hmm. that just. <laughs> It's very charming. It. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, cool. Anything else? Uh, no, I think that's it. Rock and roll. Yeah. Um, I had just noticed the other day, too, and I started watching this on uh, YouTube. Gundam Info posted um, the Thunderbolt Bandit Flower um, mm -hmm. movie. And yeah. uh, subbed and dubbed. And, uh, man, I, I just I have only watched started watching the beginning of it. It's so good. I'm just like absolutely in love with it so far. So hopefully the quality lasts to the end. But uh, yeah, that's up on Gund Gundam Info. That just got posted, what, yesterday or the day before, something like that. So uh, if you guys are into that, go check it out on Gundam Info. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, cool. Yeah, I'll check that. Yeah. And then uh, also, too, um, I don't know if we had discussed it last time or not, but Netflix has Gundam Unicorn. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so that's pretty cool. If you guys aren't uh, um, familiar with that, um, you know, which you should be, with the massive amount of unicorn kits that we have and the giant statue in Japan, um, mm -hmm. yeah, you can go on pretty much, as far as I know, all Netflix, um, you know, country designations. I know it's in Australia, UK. Um, some places in South America, places, you know, all places in between. And, uh, yeah, the whole, what is that? It, it's the OVA, right? It's just the seven long episodes. So mm. it's not the truncated version, episodic. Mm. So that's pretty cool too. So, all right, cool. Well, thank you, Zach. Yep. No problem. I, I'm thank still you, scrolling, Zach. looking for that. I think that maybe I, <laughs> that was not the modeler. I think maybe he, he like copied us uh, anyway. I'll let you guys know when I find it. Let's okay. move on. Yeah. <laughs> <Gosh>. <laughs> Zach's just gonna continue scrolling until the end of the show. It, it was a, a different model. <laughs> I don't know if he. Uh, I've seen like, I've seen on on Twitter of like hangouts with where he was like showing that technique to other people. So okay. I think that maybe that model that we looked at was actually from a different model because I found a different page here that I, th I think this is his. It's the right one. It's a different one. So. Um. I'll see here. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Hopefully I can find it. Cool. Well, hey, if you um if yeah. you find it, let us know and we'll jump back to it because I, yeah. I actually want to see that. that looks it is very cool. <laughs> I want to know how it holds all that weight. Is it like really thin plastic or what is it? I just mm -hmm. I wanna... Yeah, it looks like like maybe like uh half like 0.5 millimeter. Okay. Okay. It's pretty thin. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Awesome. Well, hey, like I said, if uh, if you find it, let us know. We'll, we'll do. jump back. <laughs> Sweet. All right. So, guys, um, let's get into the topic of conversation today. Um, so, the word hobby. I think it's kind of grown and evolved over time, and it means different things to different people. Um, and there was a... Uh, an article that we referenced and it's in the description uh, down below and obviously on the um, uh, links on uh, the Gunpla Talk uh, Facebook page and, you know, from what I posted in the chat or er, in the uh, on the groups and everything. Uh, it's a USA. Uh, what is it? USA? No, it's a New York Times article um, called In Praise of Mediocrity. And we're going to be talking about that today. Um, but before we get into the actual article, <clears throat> excuse me, um, let's talk about real quick what kind of, you know, what the word hobby means to each of us. And we'll kind of take turns and just kind of, I guess, explain that. But um, Josh, you want to you want to kick us off there? What's what's hobby mean to you, man? Um, 
I think hobby is something that you do just for the enjoyment of doing it, I guess. And that's probably the base core of it. And then that it can expand out into getting better at it or getting um, more skilled in that hobby, which then brings you more enjoyment because you can compare last to yesterday when I was doing trying to do this skate trick or something like that. Now I can do it way easier. So you get that little boost of satisfaction. Um, so basically that's it. Something that you would do even if you didn't get paid and you're doing it mainly just for the enjoyment of it. Yeah. Cool. Excellent. Zach, what about you, man? Hubby, yeah, uh, uh, basically the same as what Josh said, but I think whether you're getting paid or or not, it's really, maybe, that's that's the thing, right? Because when does it become a job instead of a hobby, but... Uh, when does it become a jobby? Let's not go there. <laughs> no, that, uh, was, that was really funny, yep. So, <laughs> hey, yeah. I wonder if that's actually what that name means. But anyway. Oh. Hmm. Man. But anyway, um, yeah, I think whether it's your job, whether it's something you're getting paid for or not, it's I think it still qualifies as a hobby. It's basically just something that you do for fun. But I don't know what's different from just like going skydiving once and having fun. That it's not exactly a hobby. I'd say it's just something that you do like uh, habitually or like regularly, semi-regularly that you enjoy doing, I guess. Yeah, yeah, repeatedly. Yeah, you were doing it once wouldn't really be considered a hobby, hobby hey? Hmm. Interesting. Uh, Interesting points all. And I, honestly, I, I really very much agree with you guys, um, especially about the point of whether you get paid or not, because, you know, like Zach said, when does it become uh, a jobby? Like Josh said, that's it. We've uh, locked it in. Yeah. We're, we're using that. That's, that's, <laughs> thanks, thanks for that. that's thanks an official talk term now. Yeah. It's official so, Zach. You gotta say yeah. it. You gotta uh, say it. <laughs> okay. Somebody, somebody call Webster's and Miriam, uh, Miriam Webster's or whatever. And, uh, all the dictionary companies, we have a new word for them. Jobby. Okay. Nice. I know. I have no aversion to saying that. I just don't want people to start spamming my comment section with jobby memes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You have to you have to field all the comments. We don't. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sorry, <laughs> Zach. <laughs> oh man, but um, yeah, no, you know, it, it, where does it become work? You know, um, is it to the point where you lose the enjoyment? Is it the point where you start to make it a living? Um, who's to say what? And who's to say that that doesn't, uh, isn't unique to every single person, mm. you know? So what's a hobby to one person? Maybe a different uh, term or definition to another person. It, mm. You know, I, I see it as being very fluid at that point, you know? Um, things to think about, you know, and we're not necessarily here to um, say this is what it is, guys. You know, we're just here to have kind of a conversation um, and throw out ideas and questions and thoughts. And then obviously you guys out there watching will be able to decide for yourself because um, I think it is kind of a ambiguous term, you know? Um, so, yeah. But I have, I have to be honest, though. Uh, at the same time, I feel like this is kind of one of those kind of arguments that I think about sometimes, but then five seconds later, I just think, like, who the fuck cares? <laughs> like, yeah. 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 It's just one of those <laughs> things, like, why is this even like something that people, anyone would spend any time even like caring about or thinking about at all? Yeah. So, I don't know. I'm kind of like on the fences. I mean, I'm not on the fence. I'm just kind of. I can go either way. Like it's something yeah. that we, we can have a discussion about, but at the same time, I, I equally don't care at all what people mm -hmm. consider is a hobby or not, that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you know, and that, that, that's a very valid point that can kind of speak to a lot of different things. It's like, mm -hmm. um, why would somebody care what a hobby means to me or, you know, mm -hmm. you guys or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and then also in the same vein, you know, it's like, you could take that existentially to the next level. It's like, why would somebody build models? You know, mm -hmm. why would they want a scaled down version of uh, a, either a real thing or a fake thing? 
you know? Yeah. So some, sometimes from the outside looking in, um, you may not necessarily have that same appreciation as the inside looking out, you know? Mm. So who knows? Yeah. We're just here yeah. to start a conversation. Sure. You know? And why in the hell would people be 138 people, 140 some odd people be watching, you know, three guys spout poetic <laughs> on the term of a hobby, you know, that, that's the same kind of thing. It just, goes to that but hey you know what i'm not i'm not hating on you guys in the audience i love you guys uh keep watching by the way and no, um, i'm i'm hating for fun. on a little bit yeah are you okay yeah it's just that's how i am so yeah they just gotta deal with it <laughs> anyway. i love it but um so yeah you know these are these are interesting topics i think and obviously makes for a good show too you know I this is a, a little bit of a tangent, but yeah, uh, I I really thought it was pretty interesting watching Justin's video the other day uh, about the backlog. Yeah. Oh, I haven't seen that yet. Yeah. The, yeah, it's it's the same kind of thing basically. On the one hand, it's an interesting topic that I think it's kind of interesting to see like where people fall on that and doing like their own opinions on the topic. But at the same time, it's kind of one of those things I really don't care about at all. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It's just such I'm, a personal I mean, thing. Yeah, I'm exactly the same. The backlog thing. I'm like, oh, come on, don't, I don't, I'm just not interested. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and yeah. I think, um, I, I think he brings up a good point, and and much very similar to what we're talking about too, is, um, you know, like for us, I mean, backlogs are like whatever, mm. you know, mm. been there, done mm. that, don't really care, but for somebody out sitting in the audience right now, um. You know, that could be a completely different uh, set of emotions, set of yeah. circumstances and all that, you know. So um, mm. and then much like our topic right now, somebody could re be really kind of pining over the fact or question, I should say, um, is, you know, what am I doing this for? Why would I waste my time putting together these little pieces of plastic? I mean, do I get enjoyment out of it? You know, all that. Mm. So. I think it does mean different things to different people. So I think mm -hmm. it's important to some, but not important at all. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So just devil's advocate. So. Yeah, of course. I, I think that's one thing that, uh, unfortunately, a lot of people I know just from like my experience in reading YouTube comments on my videos, <laughs> sometimes a lot of people tend to forget that like other people exist in the world and yeah. <laughs> other people just have different opinions and just different circumstances and everything. Yeah. So some people may think of something a little bit differently than you would or Gumpla in general or backlogs or whatever. Like you said, some people are interested in that. Other people aren't. If you aren't, uh, you can very <laughs> easily just keep scrolling. <laughs> you know? yeah. But I don't know. Uh, I think that's where I think we've, we've talked about this many times in our personal chats about getting sucked into caring about things that you really should just not care about. Yeah. If, if you don't like something or people, other people like something that you're just not in agreement with, it's, you know, easy enough to yeah. just not care <laughs> about yeah. something yeah. or just move on. But yeah, as we know, obviously people can't always do that. So, yeah. Well, and I, I, for those of you out there, these two guys can attest, I'm probably the worst of that in our group. Um, I will, I will get sucked right in and, and hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> and then these guys have to pull me back from the abyss sometimes. And it's um, humbling, you know? So, yeah. You, I think when you when you go in, you get you definitely maybe get heated, more heated than other people do. Yeah, but, yeah. But I, don't, but I know Justin's around on, on Facebook quite a bit as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I he's, like how you describe that. <laughs> I, I know Justin's around. Yep. yep. <laughs> yeah, somewhere. Yeah. I, I've just seen his comments and then just from, you know, from our talking, I know that he gets into it with people in the comment section on stuff too as well. So Yeah. And I've tried to pull that back, um, especially recently too, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and honestly, that's, that's thanks to these guys, especially. So, and you've been um, keeping busy. I think that's well. Uh, that helps too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that helps a lot. I just 
don't even like go into the the groups. I just don't really scroll as as I've told you guys before. So yeah, I just don't mm. really go there. And you've yeah. been busy, so. Well, and I try I try to help when I can in the in the groups, but yeah, uh, sometimes yeah, it's a completely lost cause. So more times than not, here recently, I've been I've basically just been like, yeah, just keep scrolling, just keep scrolling. Don't even yeah. worry about mm. it. So. But um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I and that's a, at that. yeah. well, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, and like I said, I mean that that I think is directly <laughs> related to you guys because uh, <laughs> Mister Mister Stoic Zach and and uh, and Josh, you know, just kind of everything's yeah. good with the world, you know. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I wish I could be like like these guys to be honest <laughs> with you, but that's yeah. I'm cut from a different cloth, so to speak. So, <laughs> but um, yeah, tangent wise, but still, um, that's a very good point, Zach. Because different circumstances for every single person, not every single person will see it right. uh, the same way as someone else. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, I think that's a really, really important thing to keep in mind, especially while we're discussing this article today, um, especially for those of you guys in the chat. You may feel that you are right or that you are confident in your position, um, but that's particularly your position, your unique set of circumstances and experiences. Um, mm -hmm. So let's get into this here real quick. And for those of you guys not familiar with this uh, article, um, it was in the New York Times here um, back at the end of September. September 29th was the post date. Um, and uh, Zach, do you want to give me the, the screen here real quick? We'll just yeah, quickly sure. read through this for the audience so that they are um, familiar with what we're talking about here. There you are. And um, cool. So you guys can see my screen? Yeah. Uh, not I don't, not yet, but I think mine is a little bit okay. laggy. I can, see, I can see your screen, yeah. You should be, uh, I okay, can't so see your green yeah, screen, no, I, I can see to, you are presenting. Cool. I need to do the screen hey, thing here. Welcome to, uh, there we go. There you All go. right, so you guys got that? Yeah. All right, so uh, in praise of mediocrity, the pursuit of excellence has infiltrated and corrupted the World of Leisure by Tim Wu, New York Times. So um, like I said, real quick, we're going to read through this, guys. It's probably going to take maybe five minutes to read this article. It is not long. Um, I'm a little surprised by how many people tell me they have no hobbies. It may seem a small thing, but at risk of sounding grandiose, I see it as a sign of a civilization in decline. The idea of leisure, after all, is a hard-won achievement. It presupposes that we have overcome exit exigency exigencies hope i'm saying that right of brute <laughs> survival yet here in the united states the wealthiest country in history we seem to have forgotten the importance of doing things solely because we enjoy them yes i know we are all so very busy between work and family and social obligations where are we supposed to find the time but there's a deeper reason i've come to think that so many people don't have hobbies we're afraid of being bad at them or rather, we are intimidated by the expectation, itself a hallmark of our intensely public performative age, that we must actually be skilled at what we do in our free time. Our hobbies, if that's even the word for them anymore, have become too serious, too demanding, too much an occasion to become anxious about whether you are really the person you claim to be. If you're a jogger, it's no longer enough to cruise around the block. You're training for the next marathon. If you're a painter, you're no longer passing a pleasant afternoon. Just you, your watercolors, and your water lilies. You are trying to land a gallery show or at least garner a respectable social media following. When your identity is linked to your hobby, you're a yogi, a surfer, a rock climber. You'd better be good at, uh, at it or else who are you? Lost here is the gentle pursuit of a modest competence, the doing of something just because you enjoy it, not because you are good at it. Hobbies, let me remind you, are supposed to be something different from work, but alien values like the pursuit of excellence have crept into and corrupted what was once the realm of leisure, leaving little room for the true amateur. The population of our country now seems divided between the semi-pro hobbyists, some as devoted as Olympic athletes, and those who retreat into a, the passive, screeny leisure that is signature of our technological moment. 
I don't deny that you can derive a lot of meaning from pursuing an activity at the highest level. I would never begrudge someone a lifetime devotion to a passion or an inborn talent. There are depths of experience that come with mastery. But there is also a real and pure joy, a sweet childlike delight that comes from just learning and trying to get better. Looking back, you will find that the best years of, say, scuba diving or doing carpentry were those spent on the learning curve when there was exaltation in the mere act of doing. In a way that we rarely appreciate, the demands of excellence are at war with what we call freedom. For to permit yourself to only do that which you are good at is to be trapped in a cage whose bars are not steel, but self-judgment especially when it comes to physical pursuits, but also with many other endeavors. Most of us will truly, uh, hold on, I just messed that up. Uh, especially when it comes to physical pursuits, but also with many other endeavors, most of us will be truly excellent only at whatever we started doing in our teens. What if you decide in your 40s, as I have, that you want to learn to surf? What if you decide in your 60s that you want to learn to speak Italian? The expectation of excellence can be stultifying. Liberty and equality are supposed to make possible the pursuit of happiness. It would be unfortunate if we were to protect the means only to neglect the end. A democracy, when it is working correctly, allows men and women to develop into free people, but it falls to us as individuals to use that opportunity to find purpose, joy, and contentment. Lest this sound suspiciously like an elaborate plea for people to take more time off from work, well, yes, though I'd I'd. Mm. Though I'd like to put the suggestion more grandly, the promise of our civilization, the point of all of our labor and technological progress is to free us from the struggle for survival and to make room for higher pursuits. But demanding excellence in all that we do can undermine that. It can threaten and even destroy freedom. It steals from us one of life's greatest rewards, the simple pleasure of doing something you merely but truly enjoy. Tim Wu. New York Times. So, uh, oh, am I getting a golf clap? I was just giving a golf clap either to you or Tim. It was just really nice. Yeah. Nice. Well, I appreciate um. that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, um, so that's interesting, right? Mm, indeed. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting so, point of view. So let's go through this and kind of, mm. yeah unpack this as they say um, how much is that just the word of of the ye of the last two years oh, there's a lot to unpack there let's well, just unpack well, this yeah <laughs> yeah well in the last two years there has been a lot to unpack you know oh, yes, um yes, yeah. <laughs> go ahead and release the screen for me zach if you will really? um but uh so what are you guys what are you guys initial thoughts on this uh Okay, Josh. Um, well, I I think it speaks um, to a few things. One of them being, kind of, I guess it would be the um, desert deserted island or in public. How we would behave on deserted island is probably different. How we'd be in public and knowing that other people would be able to see what we do. So I think a lot of people um, say, even with Gumpla, people would be like, "Oh man, I'm jealous of your skill or your experience. Um, I could never do something like that." And they might not enter the GBWC because they feel like they're not going to be good enough. Um, so I think there's that perception of how what you produce, how it will appear to others or even to yourself. So you're already prejudging it. Um, and probably the basic example of that is when I was younger, um, I would do some drawing and if it wasn't turning out good, I'd tear it out of my sketchbook and throw it away. I wouldn't want it sitting in my sketchbook. I wouldn't just go, okay, I'll finish that one and I'll turn the page and draw another one. I actually wouldn't like it in there. So um, that's probably a point that I noticed in that. Um, yeah, we're, we're self-conscious of how what we do might look or might appear to others and to ourselves, which stifles it immediately. Mm. I uh, had another thought too that I actually was talking about this earlier today, um, that I think that one reason why there's this higher expectation of like how it was talking about like where you're not just a runner but you're training for a whatever, or like you have to be like going at least like semi pro with your hobby all the time. But I think one reason for that is just because uh, more than any time in the past, you actually can make a living with your hobby. 
mm. whatever that may be for a lot for a mm. lot of things um i think there's so much more opportunities now to uh you know at least have success whatever that success may be monetary success or just like fame uh just with your hobbies and a lot of people i would say most people would enjoy that you know mm. why not mm. You know, do what you would love doing and get paid for it, and mm. have a massive following for that. So, like, if you can, you know, why wouldn't you strive to do that? And so, I think, does that suck some of the joy out of just doing the hobby just for the fun of it? Possibly. Mm. Mm -hmm. it, it, I think that probably takes some self control. Because, like, like, say, if you're doing, uh, I don't know, tennis or something like that. Um, 50 years ago, you could, if you played tennis, you just played tennis. There was no like f filming and making any kind of videos or putting on YouTube or anything like that. So the focus was just on tennis and you weren't thinking, geez, I wish there was some sort of social media platform I could share this on because you didn't know it, it didn't, didn't exist. So you weren't missing it. Um, if that kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And there, speaking of missing it, there's the whole fear of missing out argument as well. I think it was probably at least a little bit related. Mm. Uh, if you are seeing on social media, like just for the, like the running example, and like you enjoy running, so maybe you follow some running, I don't know, Adidas, you follow Adidas on something on Instagram, and like you're constantly bombarded by seeing all this stuff about like these awesome runners shared by Adidas. And you can you have that, that fear of missing out, like, oh, I could be doing like that with my running. Mm. I could achieve mm -hmm. that. So like, whoa, I want to do that too. Yeah. So, yeah. Hmm. What about also like even just in society, it might be Western society or something where it's like, um, oh, so what are you doing? And it's like, you got to be doing something with your life all the time. So like, oh, I'm going to university or I'm studying to do this or now I'm in this job and I'm going to work my way up to manager. Um, and so maybe that's creeping into hobbies as well. Um, if somebody's like, oh, so what do you what do you get up to on the weekends? And you go, oh, I just jog. And they go, oh, are you like, are you training for anything? No, no, just jog. And it takes a bit of self-esteem to just go, I just jog and that's all I do. And that's fine. And <laughs> training for a marathon, I don't need to train for a marathon. I don't need to go for any races or anything like that. Because um, like even with my art, um, friends and family will say like, oh, you should, you should sell that or you should, you should do this and then turn it into this. And I'm like, oh, no, I'm okay. I'm fine to do this. So it feels like there should be this, um, I don't know continuing wheel towards some kind of level of achievement or success. Um, and maybe that's crept into hobbies. Um, and we've maybe even crept that in ourselves into our hobbies. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a thing. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, uh, I think it's a cycle with things. I mean, obviously right now we are more co connected globally than ever before at any time in history. Um, so that connection beyond our own kind of, uh, personal circle, um, influences us into bigger more grand ideas um you know so you see things especially like in our hobby like um you, you know you see guys that have won gbwc on you know facebook and instagram and all of that and you know you can't help but to i guess wonder or be envious or you know any you know list of words from that so you know, I, I think that has a part to play in it as well. Um, I don't know. It's, uh, it's, you know, right now, obviously, it is different from any other time in history with the massive connectivity that we have through Facebook, through social media, YouTube, especially um, being able to uh, kind of broadcast our thoughts, our unique um experiences and things like that out to other people um there's a level of influence that you know we as people broadcasting that i think should probably be cognizant of but at the same time uh the consumer of that content also needs to have the responsibility in knowing that hey i don't have to be like that I can just do me and enjoy what I do, you know? So I think it's a give and take. Mm. At least that's... You, you know. guys have... Um, I've noticed myself from doing like my Sinanju and then my Zeta and stuff, how it's like I know the amount of time that's going to 
it's going to take to do something to the level that I kind of enjoy. Um, and um, it might be eight months or a year to do one kit. And that stifles me from starting another kit that I'm not positive that I want to devote that much time to. Um, so if I start, say, like a master grade Hazel, and I'm like, okay, I'll do all that. And I'm like, I'm going to be doing this for a year. Do I want to do this on the Hazel? And it kind of pauses me, and I can't decide what I want to work on next. Um, have you guys had any kind of, like I noted down in the article, they say you're intimidated by the expectation, um, mm -hmm. and that might even be self-expectation. Have you had that change what you do in any hobby, Gunpla, anything like that? Um, like, say, for example, somebody's like, hey, come to this painting class or this life drawing class. Um, and you'd be like, oh, man, I kind of don't want to because my stuff's going to be crap. And so you don't go. Like, have you had any examples of that happen to you? I think not. Uh, not for like a specific kit like you're talking about or like for a specific mm. project, but more for like specific techniques. Uh, and I think mm. that's something we, we've, I know we've talked about before, uh, especially for like airbrushing, that, that's kind of like a big step that a lot of people have a hard time getting over just because of the, that fear of knowing that it's kind of a little bit of intimidating. Mm. And so, so whether it's airbrushing or you know whatever else, you, something that you see other people doing a lot of, and you say like like you know that that's really cool and that's something that you know can be done, and you really want to do that, but you have anxiety about it, and that's kind of unfortunate. And this is something that uh, while we were reading, reading the article, I thought about that I, w I wanted to mention. It's related to this, is that I think that. A lot of times when people are talking about whether they want to, because you hear this thing about people saying like, oh, I just, I just snap build and I just like, I just enjoy the kits just as they are and not painting or like, because we've, we've had this argument and Tim, you even wrote your article that it was, it's been a couple of years now, right? About, yeah. Yeah. about that, about kind of developing your skills and like the argument whether to just let people just do whatever they want and like, or really wanting to push people to develop their skills to painting and scratch building and doing whatever like that. And I think, I'm sure you guys maybe feel the same way too. And a lot of people might take offense to hearing this, but uh, I think in the back of our minds, when we hear people say like, you know, I just don't want to paint. I just want to enjoy the models as, as they are. A part of me thinks that they just are nervous. They're just afraid. To paint they don't want to mess up their kids they don't want to take that step it requires a lot of money there's a learning curve to have to learn how to airbrush and that's intimidating for people and i think that's perfectly fine to say i would like to paint but i'm just kind of intimidated by it so i'm just not ready to take that step if someone said that i totally understand mm -hmm. but i think some people probably make excuses and that's fine too but uh I think that that probably exists. I don't know if you guys have ever thought that as well, but I've certainly considered that as an option. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I think there's a percentage of people that fall into that category that may not just, um, they may not want to necessarily admit that they're not prepared to take that next step. Mm -hmm. um, but likewise, I think there is um, an equal, maybe even greater percentage of people that are truly comfortable with just that maybe they just mm -hmm. don't really either you know have the time or the inclination um mm -hmm. to take those next steps and um you know back when uh, back years and years and years ago i would have you know you would have asked me the same question and i would have been like yeah you know everybody's just afraid but as mm -hmm. i have uh, obviously you know, talked with different people and been influenced by, you know, a, a, you know, a ton of different folks, um, you do kind of get that sense that some people are truly, truly happy with where they are. Um, and you have to, at some point, admire that too, um, because different people have different levels of desire for, um, I guess, success, you know, for lack of a better term. Um, or just me, yeah, I mean, me, I, I want to constantly improve everything that I do. I want to constantly improve. That is just my personality. That's just my, um, you know, my makeup. Um, but there could be 
you know, dude down the street that is just completely 100% content um, with where he is in life, you know? Um, you know, I want to make more money. I want to go farther in, in my career. I want to go farther in the hobby. Um, I want to do this. I want to do that. Where that guy down the street's just like, I'm good. I'm happy. Everything's awesome. You know, got a great family, got a great house. I'm happy with where I am. I don't, I don't need anything more than what I got, you know? And I, I think just as much as someone trying to, um, improve consistently. Um, I think there needs to be an equal amount of respect for that person to have, uh, not only the wherewithal, but the, for lack of a better term, again, bravery to admit to everyone that they're just truly happy with where they are, mm. you know? Um, because that's, uh, that could be a hard, a hard thing to admit. Well, it, it goes back to what we were talking about before about that people just sometimes forget that other people are different online. And so yep. uh, I agree that whatever the case is, whether you are truly comfortable in whatever stage you are in the hobby or you're intimidated to take the next step, whatever is fine. Really, no one cares. No one should care. But the problem is that there is people who act out online and will you know, make people feel bad for yeah. whatever that is, unfortunately. And that's kind of the problem. That's what I would, if there's anything that I would love to change about the hobby is people caring too much about what other people do in the yeah. hobby or don't yeah. do. Yeah. yeah. And, Man, if I could change anything in the world, it would be that. Well, yeah, right, of course. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I thought, uh, okay. Uh, go ahead. Oh. I thought uh, I was trying to think of different metaphors for, or analogies for the intimidation by the expectation. Um, uh, like one of them would be kind of dancing. If you like go to a wedding or something like that and people are like, yeah. man, come on, get up and dance. And you're like, I am not getting up. I can't dance. But uh, like, well, it's, it's the goal. Me. Yeah, totally. And it's that's the me. expectation of what the goal is. And the goal is should mm. just be you go up and move your body in whatever way you want and you enjoy doing that to the music. But we're like, man, I got to at least look like I'm kind of dancing in rhythm and I'm kind of looking a little bit smooth. Um, and that's just <laughs> just such a thing. Like, I love to do dance. Like, um, I work with a couple of girls. They do dance. They've done it for years. And I'm like, and I watch videos of people doing all the cool stuff. And I'm like, that looks like it'd be so much fun because I, I have grown to enjoy dancing. And I'm like, man, I'd love to do dance. But I'm like, oh, man, I'm like 39 now. I'm doing all these other hobbies. And I'm like, it's going to take me like five years to get any good and in control of my body. And I'm like, I'm totally missing the whole point because I'm setting my goal as being good at dancing, not enjoying learning to dance. And so it's where you mm -hmm. place your goal, which I yeah. think is what the intimidator by expectation is. Um, yeah. So I should. Yeah. I find that interesting. Mm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like and like you said, um, the dancing thing. Uh, that could not hit closer to home for me oh, man. Um, because, yeah. you know, it's it's funny, like sometimes my wife and I, you know, rarely will go to, you know, a wedding or something, a get together or, you know, a Christmas party or something like that where there is a dance floor and other people are in the act of dancing. Um, but my wife knows, you know, not to, you know, ask me. <laughs> um, to dance because I'm just going to be like, eh, nah, I don't really want to and all that. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's funny because at the same time, if I, if I, you know, consume a, a few beverages, um, mm -hmm. and that liquid courage starts to build up, uh -huh. I'll be out there just going crazy, waving my hands in the air, you know, doing, mm -hmm. recreating scenes from flash dance. But it's, funny because if I was truly unable to be out there on the dance floor, then I, even when I'm drunk, I still wouldn't be able to, to get out there. Mm -hmm. So it is a, a, you know, kind of a mental, uh, like a mental block, mm -hmm. uh, or, uh, a fear, uh, mm -hmm. more than anything. So sure. yeah, perfect example. Perfect yeah, example. I, I'm exactly the same. <laughs> I will not move a muscle until <laughs> I reach, I reach that like clicking point of liquid courage. And then yeah. I'm just like nuts on the dance floor. And like, uh, it really takes me back. I really miss the times in Japan when I was living <laughs> in Japan. And like my friends would know, cause like, uh, 
probably like my best friend that I hung out with. He's my coworker, another uh, Aussie guy. Uh, and he was like a semi-professional dancer. He was just like oh, in Japan goodness. doing like the English teacher thing as like a just thing to just kind of check out Japan. But actually he was like a dancer. So we, we'd go out to like the clubs together and he just like dancing right away. He's like, come on, man, come on, man. All the time. I'm like, not yet, not yet. Like drinking, one more drink. <laughs> I'm waiting for the right song. And that was the thing too. The music like made a big difference for me as well. Oh yeah. It's like a, yeah. he had to have the nice, perfect combination of just the right music that I'm looking for and just the right amount of alcohol and then I'd be like all in. But yeah, once I got yeah. there and yeah, it's just, it's just a wall. Like once you're past that, yeah. you, mm -hmm. can, you can do anything. You're Superman. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that, that look with courage, man. Mm, but that I mean, like, probably, I guess that's, mm, uh, that can be applied to, uh, to the hobby as well. Yeah. Yeah. Because mm, I guess there's, there's like two, like the dance and analogy thing, there's two elements there. One of them is dancing in public. And that brings this whole kind of fear thing because you're like, I'm expecting that they're expecting you should be good if you're dancing. Yeah. Um, but then the separate thing to that is if there's nobody else, it's just you, a dance studio, and you're like, I'm going to learn dancing. And I think that's what this article talks more about is um, right. we're going, I need to be good at this from the get-go. So yeah. I'm not going to be, so I'm not going to try. And whereas the point is I should just be in the dance studio on my own, put the music on and just dance around and just be a goose and have fun. Um, so I think that's kind of where the focus is, um, yeah. regardless of other people existing. Um, yeah, but the, the other people does play a part to it. But I think that's the, the main focus. Well, for me anyway, from the article. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I mm. think that's a really good point because there is a certain level of perceived expectation. Um, and I, I, I think that is, uh, a lacking point in this article is the talk of perceived expectation, not necessarily actual expectation. Um, because I mean, hell years ago when I first started the hobby, no one expected me to be good except for myself. Right. Um, but I thought people expected me to be good. So well, I, I think well, that's, I, I think that's a little bit of a, uh, you know, uh, a weird, yeah way to describe things in the article you know this too, I think, this too i think is just a matter of of what we have access to there's so much access to all this information online yeah it's like uh, uh you have the ability to learn so much so like why wouldn't you and like we know just from like dealing with people in the hobby when people ask some question like oh just google it right yeah but like in the past people didn't really have that as an option so uh but I think this is something that you see with a lot of like some of like the best modelers that we know. Uh, they're so creative and creativity comes so much out of not having that resource, not having yeah. all the resources that we have at our fingertips. You just, we just want to know how to do something. You just look it up, order whatever tools you need, whatever paints you need, you just order, just buy whatever you need. But so much, I think you get so much more creative when you have to work with less. So like not yeah. having access to a million YouTube videos and mm -hmm. Amazon to just buy everything that you need for the hobby where you have to mm -hmm. just make your own tools. Like, so you wanted to make some panel lines on your kit. So you just got to figure out how to do it. Uh, that's a really, that's a really great point. Um, because, uh, I, I think the perfect example of that, of something like that is, uh, is our good friend win. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I was thinking. Uh, I mean, of. yeah, I mean, GBWC world champion, uh, second place the year after. Uh, I love him to death. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's a wonderful modeler. Fact is, he'll be the first one to tell you that he does not know how to airbrush and he wants no part of it. He hand brushes everything. So, to yeah. Zach's point, I, you know, and like he said, I think that's the perfect example of doing more with less. So, mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And so like if you don't have or, or just like something that you want to do and you don't know how to do it, just try some things and it doesn't work. You know, we, we've talked about this many times on the show and yeah. under different topics, you right. know, just try and fail and try and fail. And yeah, it's a waste of money. It's a waste of time. But that's what really drives your creativity for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um. A couple of things that I wanted to bring up about the article. Um, one of the, I, I think the overarching 
theme of this was um, obviously this was more contained, you know, to the United States. So uh, I, I think the cultural ideas and norms and things like that are kind of you know, contained within, um, you know, uh, the U S and may not necessarily be familiar or, um, you know, anything to, uh, countries outside the U S but still the fact remains that it's, a, it's still a very, very relevant article. Um, because here in the U S yeah, there are a, a serious lack of hobbies. You see hobby stores closing up all the time. Um, you know, you, you, you look at a lot of people and they're like, Hey, do you have a hobby? No, I just, just work, take care of the family. That's it. Mm. Um, and I think a part of that is uh, another uh, overarching um, subject is is being busy all the time. Um, mm. Here in the U.S., I mean, we work, God, we work more hours um, than I think most countries in the world. So our m amount of free time uh, is definitely um, less compared to most of the other developed countries in the world, which is really unfortunate. And I think the author also said something at the end um, where he was advocating for more time off. Um, mm. And I would absolutely totally support that because mm. the here in the US, if you guys aren't familiar, the work life balance is way off, way yeah. off. Um, it, it, you're, you're bordering on um, Japanese level of work commitment, uh, like back in the eighties when that was it, you know, people would work, you know, 18, 19 hours and then come home, sleep, go back, do it again. Um, but that's kind of the phenomena that we're, we're facing here in the U S right now, unfortunately. So this is, this is something that? Yeah, this is something just related to that. And I was going to say this earlier too, when Josh was talking about this, that I think the other problem is that there's a stigma about not having a hobby or not being good at your hobby. So like when mm -hmm. someone asks you if you have a hobby and you say, no, not really, like that person's going to think like, oh, what's this, what's this guy, like loser with yes. no hobby? Yeah. Uh, or uh, you say, oh, you say running, for example, since that was what we've been talking about. You say like, oh yeah, I run what's usually the second question someone's gonna ask is are you any good at it yeah, like exactly so what if i am so what if i'm not what what does it matter like but you know is they're gonna ask that so like mm -hmm. you just kind of know what the expectation is like in your society that people are expected to either have a hobby or you're a loser if you gotta have mm -hmm. if you have a hobby you better be good at it yeah because otherwise yeah, like you know, the like <laughs> The question shouldn't be like, oh, yeah, I run. And you go, oh, are you good at it? It should be like, oh, what do you enjoy about it? Like, what do you like about it? Like, the questions are like angled in the wrong direction. Mm. Yeah. Or just, that's cool. Or that's cool. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I enjoy running too. Or, you know, oh, I hate running. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so I, I have a thing with, with um, whenever I go to like, I don't know, a, a party or something, I don't really know people, of course, the, so what do you do for work is just, I'm dreading it when it gets quiet oh, between God. me and somebody else. And I'm like, oh no, they're forming the question. Here it comes. <laughs> um, and, and they go, what do you do for work? And I'm like, inside, I'm like, no, you just, now you've just locked us into this small talk jail. Yeah. Uh, but, um, and, but I get, it. they don't know what to say. So they just go to that. So I'm like, I'm not going to say, what do you do for work? And I'm like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And I start to say to people, oh, so what do you do for fun? Mm -hmm. And then, and, I've realized now that that question is almost worse because mm -hmm. at least most people have a job. They can respond, but some people go, Oh, I don't know. Or I go, Oh, have you got any hobbies? And they're like, Oh, Oh, and they pause. And then I can see that they're trying to work out are the things I do hobbies. Will this guy think it's a hobby? Will he think it's valued as a hobby? And so I kind of put them mm -hmm. on the spot and I even say, Oh man, reading a book or watching, watching movies or something. That's a hobby playing video games, whatever you want. Um, so I now don't ask that question anymore. Um, oh, nice. I change it up and I just go, Oh, what'd you do this weekend? Yeah. Um, because I think people are so worried, like you say, Zach, that um, if they say yeah. what they do for a hobby, my next question is going to be like, Oh, so prove to me that you're good at it somehow. Mm -hmm. or like right. That. Yeah. Mm. That's interesting. That's yeah. very interesting. And, you know, and, and just a, 
circle back about the the work life thing. I I because I, I saw a couple comments come up on uh, the chat, um, and uh, one one person said um, I think people take everything they do in Asian countries much more seriously than Western side, um, and that's a very good point. I agree with that, um, but I think that. <laughs> Uh, in, in predominantly in Asian countries, and this is a generality, is that they do take it more seriously. Um, but, you know, here in the States, the amount of work um, that we are basically forced to do to be able to provide uh, to at least some sort of comfort level um, is pretty high. Um, we may not necessarily take it as seriously as other countries. That's, that's a very valid point. Um, but man, the, 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 the level of work is, is very, very high. Um, so it, it's, it's one of those kind of tragic things here. That's not necessarily, I would say unique to the U S but the mix of, um, uh, of characteristics are probably unique to the U.S., um, but uh, you know a couple things, a couple other things that I wanted to touch on before we run out of time because we're getting low, um, is the 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 statement the pursuit of excellence has crept in. Um, what do you guys what do you guys <laughs> think of that? I mean, is pursuit of excellence is that a is that a negative term or a positive term or something in between what do you guys think oh i think with anything um anything can be positive or negative if it's done in excess or done more than it's healthy um mm -hmm. and so if if you're chasing the pursuit of excess excellence to your own detriment that you won't try other things um because you know that you're not good then i think it's harmful um yeah. but if you're choosing to pursue the excellence like with my um drawings i was slowly getting trying to get finer and finer with my ballpoint pen um and so that you couldn't see the hatches as well. And I think on my last drawing in St. Andrew, I'm like, okay, I pretty much have reached my pinnacle here. I've reached that. I'm going to try some other stuff now. Um, but if I didn't do another drawing um, because I was worried that it wouldn't be better than my last drawing, then that would be where it wouldn't be healthy. Um, so, yeah, mm. I think it's neither positive nor negative. Yeah. Okay. Zach, what do you think? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, one of, uh, one of, Probably my number one favorite director, uh, it's kind of hard to say, but I think probably my favorite director, uh, American director, is Darren Aronofsky. Okay. And uh, wrestler. Yep, yeah, that's one of them. Uh, I think that his movies, for the most part, I think are very largely understood, misunderstood from my point of view. Each one, I think, has a different uh, theme that I think yeah. generally gets kind of glossed over by people looking at it as a. a traditional movie of like story and characters and things like that. But I think his movies are very thematic. Uh, and Black Swan is a really good example of the theme of what we're talking about. Uh, mm. uh, commitment to, to something and how it can be horrible in some cases yeah. If, yeah. by taking something too far, uh, by taking your passion too far, where at the same time, you know, taking your passion as hard as and as far as you can is how you achieve, you know, your success or your whatever level of greatness and notoriety or fame or whatever. Uh, so it can be a kind of delicate line that I think, uh, as I mentioned before, I think it's self-control is, is a part of it as well. For most people, I think that's not a problem. I mean, it's a hobby that you do for fun, Gunpla yeah. or video games or whatever don't require a whole lot of self-control not to go crazy doing them, but... Uh, it can be like for for example Justin's video about the backlog that's something where people can go out of control for sure yeah <laughs> that's like one aspect of the hobby um, that's more along the lines of like collecting rather than like I think the building aspect which is I think what we're talking about but uh, yeah it's just about self control and uh, yeah knowing or like knowing what is your goal or what you're enjoying of the hobby and being comfortable with that. So uh, if, if the, you, the joy that you're getting is from the collecting and building whatever and being comfortable with that and just living up to that, 
and just letting people know in the hubby that you're comfortable with that and just other people accepting again just accepting whatever other people are are into as well so mm -hmm. cool yeah. Very I think it, the the pursuit of excellence thing. I think he, the articles may be talking about how it's creeping into everything. Like it's fine to have to go have a pursuit of excellence for something, but when you're trying to do it, when it feels like you have to do that for everything, that's when it's not good. Kind of like how um, when you go to university. I don't know what your grade systems are over in the states or or Korea, but over here we have number systems. So a seven is like the highest. Six mm -hmm. is really good as well. Five, I think five or four is pass. Um, and it's like, oh man, I got a six and seven doesn't get you a better degree. It's just a seven. You can still pass with the fives, but it feels like um, it's crept in like that. So maybe that's what he's talking about. Um, the pursuit of excellence. Um, it's creeping in um, into too many areas, almost like every area. Um, it's almost like trying to do everything to perfection. Um, you, some projects that I do, I'm like, I normally do hundred percent, try and get this as good as possible. And sometimes I'm like, no, I'm just going to do 50. And then it just, um, it's a different approach to it. Um, so I think maybe that's what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of, I, I kind of got the feeling reading it. Um, and I've read this article several times is that it almost within the context of the article had a negative connotation, you know, mm -hmm. um, especially with the words that he used around it have crept in, um, meaning that it's kind of stalkingly kind of come in and he also used the words uh corrupted earlier uh i think in the uh description line um what what was he how did that uh yeah here it is okay so in the just underneath of the um the title his little uh, description line it says the pursuit of excel excellence has infiltrated and corrupted the world of leisure so <laughs> definite negative undertones you know from what at least my, you know, yeah. uh, um, understanding, you know, tells me, um, which I, you know, I, I can't, I, I can't agree with that because some people take a lot of joy in that pursuit of excellence, you know? Um, well, I don't think he was saying that pursuit of excellence isn't good. He's saying it's crept in, in the sense that, it's stopping people doing things that they could be doing. Um, okay. I think his goal of his article is saying, I think not enough people are having fun and enjoying themselves with hobbies. Right. And this is the reason why I think they're not doing it. I don't think right. he's saying anything negative to that. His goal is I'm sad people aren't having fun doing fun stuff. Yeah. This is why. Yeah. That's why I think that's what my take is on it. Mm. Okay. That's interesting. Mm. Because I mean, every, everybody, um, reads things differently, obviously, without inflection from the source, right? Um, and I could read it in my own inflection, uh, like I did, and it could be completely different from what the author intended. So that's really interesting mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, so that's pretty cool. Um, what about the, the comment he said, uh, the best years were spent on the learning curve? Do you guys mm -hmm. agree or disagree with that? Um, I would think sometimes, um, like I did bonsai for maybe about five or six years. Um, okay. and man, the early years were so much fun. You're learning about old species and learning how to wire and stuff. You're getting heaps of results with all every spring and stuff. Um, so maybe in that one, the best few years, um, probably like if I kept doing it now, the best years were in the early years. I think it's particular to each hobby. Um, okay. uh, maybe best years in Gunpla, um, were in the early years now. Um, but for me, uh, but I think it's dependent on each hobby. So I, I don't agree totally with that in a blanket statement. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but there is something to say with the thrill of the learning. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Mm. Zach, what about you? What do you think? Uh, yeah, I don't know. This is, this is kind of one of those things that I really don't think I can really weigh in on too well just because it's, it's so dependent. It's on such like a case by case basis. Sure. Mm -hmm. I, I think so many people will just have such a wide range of, of answers to this question is what were the best years of your hobby? It's really dependent right. on so many things. So can't really give my personal opinion. I can tell you uh, I'm enjoying what I do now. So that's, I think, 
good for me. I, I really don't know if I could say like from when I first got into Gumpla and like I was first just like building kits compared to now. I don't know. I enjoyed it then and I still enjoy it now. So yeah, I don't think there's, it would be really hard for me to just try to say which exact time is like <laughs> the best time in my life that I ever enjoyed. Mm. What were my golden years? Mm. If I If I had at some point not enjoyed it as much, then I probably would have stopped doing it. And like yeah. I did stop yeah. doing it for a while. And I think at the time when I did stop doing Gunpla for a while, it wasn't because I didn't enjoy it. It was because of the circumstances of the time of being a high school student with a girlfriend and a band and different interests. So, <laughs> right. So, <laughs> yes. Uh, but like, yeah, I, I think that's a, maybe, I don't know, maybe that applies to different hobbies more than ours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, about the learning curve. Like say if your hobby was uh, leather work, or something. I don't yeah. know. I I could see how like if you had maybe not an apprenticeship, but if you were like working with a mentor, how that time could be like a really special time in the hobby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And maybe if you have that kind of experience in Gunpla as well, if if you have an experience where like you had a time where you were really hanging out with a lot of friends and like all learning a lot together like five years ago, but now you are moving moved away and you're like just by yourself or something i could see how like maybe you would look back at that time as being like your favorite mm. time in the hobby but it just depends on the situation of everyone so yeah it feels like um the the thing maybe he could have said or his meaning behind it is if you're focused on the pursuit of excellence and you're not wanting to start a hobby because you're not know you're not going to be good at the start he goes you're totally missing the whole point a lot of people say it's the early point that is the most enjoyable. You're thinking about the second part where you're going to be really good, but don't think about that. Think about how good the early point is because a lot of people might miss that. So I'm thinking that's right. what his aim was with that sentence. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm really happy to kind of hear your guys' answers on that because I'm, I'm pretty much very in the same boat as you guys because, like, there's something to be said um, – uh, probably in other hobbies where, you know, like Zach said, I mean, if you have a mentor and you're really close to that person, that would be the absolute best time because there's no expectations or anything like that. You're still learning. Um, you know, you've got, you know, a good person to uh, look up to and kind of basically be friends with and everything. Um, but also at the same time, it's like, um, I think the best years, at least for me and my own personal experiences, um, are right now. Mm -hmm. I'm enjoying myself more in this hobby right now than I ever have. Um, simply because um, I've obviously built my skill set up to where I can, I, I have the, the uh, ability to do more things, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so when I was starting out, I mean, I was a one person island. I didn't know anybody around me uh, that built models. There were no hobby shops around me or anything like that. And all I all I had access to was, um, you know, online. But now um, with building my skill set and everything and I mean, hell, this this hobby and kind of where I am right now, uh, I mean, it's taken me all over the world and met new people. I mean, I wouldn't be familiar with you guys or be friends with you guys. And unless, you know, we were all kind of at, you know, the level that we're at right now. Um, so quite frankly, for me personally, man, I, I love right now more than any other time. Well, I mean, we get to get do this awesome show every month. I mean, mm -hmm. we get to talk to and interact with amazing people. Um, and that's that, all based on how hard we've worked, you know? That That's what I was going to ask is that do you think that maybe you're enjoying it now because you feel in some way that like kind of you've made it to some sort of point of success in terms of like notoriety and – being um, more well known in the hobby and also being a GBWC winner and things like that. Do you think like now you're enjoying it more just because you've reached that certain point or it's like it is actually related to the hobby or it's related to the effects of the hobby? I, I you know what? That's an excellent question. I, I think that's extremely, extremely valid. I think, let me first say that the level of notoriety yeah, I could take it or leave it, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, 
my enjoyment right now is coming from the people that I interact with. Um, you guys predominantly, um, you know, those Gundam guys. I mean, that stream the other night was just probably the most fun I've had uh, in a very, very long time with mm -hmm. things like this because we just let loose. Um, you know, there was no liquid courage either, surprisingly. Mm -hmm. uh, we just had fun and we were, you know, uh, making fun of each other and just, you know, having laughs and everything. So I think my, in, my level of enjoyment right now is predominantly, um, from the, uh, varying population of people that I interact with right now. And, um, am, and am able to, um, become friends with, you know, um, because that's really important to me. You know, um, that's, uh, I mean, I've made some, uh, amazing friends in this hobby. Um, I mean, hell Justin, you know, I was at his, his wedding reception. Um, I would not have been able to have that opportunity, um, without obviously this hobby, you know? So, um, yeah, I, I think it's the people for me, the people interaction and, and all that that's, absolutely rewarding so thirsty Thirst, thirsty <laughs> i said interesting oh interest i thought you said thirsty i was like you're thirsty go get a drink man you got I, it. I, I, I liked the I, I took a note of one of the later lines in it and he said um permitting yourself to only do things you're good at is a self-imprisonment um yeah. and i'm like yeah, because it's almost like, um, like remember we we do the drawings on the show sometimes, and yeah. um, and you guys are like, man, oh, it's gonna be terrible. I'm like, yep, make it bad. It's we have like two <laughs> minutes. It's gotta be fast. And so, like, permitting yourself to only do things you're good at, I think it's healthy for us to go. Okay, my task now is to do this. Yes. <laughs> oh man, my Love task it. now is to do this badly, and yeah. I don't know if we do that enough. Um, and like, oh, I'm going to do this and it's going to suck. And that's the whole point. Um, uh, and it's, I don't know. I kind of like that idea. Yeah. Um, what am I going to do bad today? Cause then you're, you're, you're setting your expectation, right? Yeah. I don't know. Mm. And I think at the same time, you don't, uh, especially in this hobby, you have to be prepared for that failure. You almost have to welcome it too. Mm. I mean, I've spent days, almost, well, I should say a week scratch building parts. And then never use them. Mm. You know, I mean, That's and so I've, annoying, I, yeah. what's that? That's so annoying. Yeah. Oh, dude. Yeah. I mean, like for the Aussie, I built these um, back thrusters and I spent honestly like a week building these things. And I've, I've um, showed the guys on my stream, but um, I, I spent a solid week scratch building these things. And, at the end of the day, I looked at them. I'm like, man, these are just ugly. I'm not going to use them. <laughs> and as jo as Josh and the Aussies say, in the bin, you know, yes. that's where it ended up in the bin. So you do have to almost be comfortable with failure, I think, <laughs> and that's hard for a lot of people. Mm. You know? So surely. On that note, I think. Uh, it's about that time, you guys. Yep. A great conversation. What do you guys so think? I'm, I'm going to do my I, own Josh Ran Randolph. Go ahead, Josh. What are you going to do? My own Josh Randolph. On this, on this whole topic, here's my final yeah, thought. Yeah, go. Go ahead. Get it clear in your head what your goal is. And if your yeah. goal is to be awesome at it, that's fine. But sometimes keep your goal small and just go, my goal is to just try this and that's it. It's 15 minutes. Just try it out. Or my goal is to have fun doing this thing. That's it. So keep an eye on what your actual goal is and make sure it doesn't get all silly buggers on you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Zach, what do you think? Any, any, any say, Zach roundup? Yeah. Just uh, live and let live. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the uh, stoicism. I love it. <laughs> love it. Yep, exactly. Um, you got you to gotta know what is in your control and what's not. Yeah. And what other people do is absolutely 100% not in your control and never will be. Yeah. Yes. So, awesome. As soon as you yes. have a good grasp on that, you'll be a lot happier in whatever you're doing. 
and other people will enjoy being around you more. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, totally. Totally. Yeah. I, I, and that's why I'm, I've been trying to take pointers from you guys on how to interact with people, to be honest with you. So <laughs> and it has so much nicer to be around now as a result. Fuck you, man. <laughs> oh. No, no, it's, it, I totally agree. Oh, <laughs> oh geez. that was great, Zach. Oh, yeah, right. man. And, oh. and, and Tim, yeah, clarify, yeah. it's not easy. It's, you're not learning how to interact with people. You're learning how to interact with people on, online. That's totally different. Oh, well, yeah. You can, yeah, admit, you can interact with people yeah. fine. It's the online yeah. thing that's, that's silly. Yeah. 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 It's a different world. A different world. Um, mm -hmm. Man, you know, for me, you know, just a quick roundup is, um, I forget who said it, but it was, it was, I, I, I saw this on TV the other night and somebody said, um, you'll never learn if you only do things that you're good at. Yeah, yeah. that was uh, Dr. Phil. What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't watch Dr. Phil, so it might've been somebody else or uh, somebody got it from Dr. Phil. I don't know. I'm just joking. <laughs> Jesus, Dr. <laughs> Phil. Uh, Catch me outside. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's wrap. The, let's put a bow on this one, you guys. Uh, real quick, let's do some plugs, shall we? Uh, Josh, you want to go first, buddy? Yeah. Okay. So I'm doing weekly Magic the Gathering podcasts. Um, they're like five hours long podcast, <laughs> um, and I live stream twenty four seven on this, so you can watch me do that as my life goes downhill. Um, please support me on Patreon so I can afford booster packs. Thank you. Uh, never mind. Uh, I, sell, <laughs> I sell artwork. JoshRadera.com. Um, buy my prints there. I send them all around the world. Chat to me on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram, Josh Rodera. That's it. Yeah, buy paper houses. They're really cool. And also buy Gumbler. It's it's still all right. Josh, I'm, my advice for you would be hurry up and get married, dude, because you need that you need that wife's control over your expenses right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So uh, big uh, kid. I, I so envy that. <laughs> oh, man. Zach, what, if, what yeah. about you, man? Go ahead and plug. Uh, I want to plug this Twitter account because I want oh, did to you find the, the right video? one, what I was talking about. I didn't find the video. I haven't found it. Oh. I don't know. I think it was maybe uh, because like, what uh, I've seen him like doing hangouts together with other people. Not like hangouts, but just like hanging out with other people. Yeah. I think what it was probably was a, someone else on Twitter took a video of him doing it as a demonstration. Oh, gotcha. I was gotcha. looking through like, his likes and his shares. I'm sure he right. must have liked it. Video, but I couldn't find it. Anyway, uh, no. I'll show you his account. You guys can check it out. <clears throat> um, and there's some other photos. At least you can kind of see. Uh, oh yeah, look Anub at that. Anubisin, Anubis N N. Uh, huh. So yeah, it just starts off with just like a piece, and he like kind of cuts it up like that. Wow. And then it'll just like uh, work with each section at a time, each little part, uh, and then just kind of becomes like that. Huh. And then just paint it. That's oh, yeah. so cool. Uh, and then there's another one here. I'll show you this one. It shows his uh, a couple other examples. And this is the lighter that he uses. I don't think it really matters the lighter you use. Yeah. It might matter because I think maybe some lighters might uh, cause uh, like actual burning. Like it will like it'll actually blacken the plastic or something. Right. So I don't know if this is like maybe a butane lighter or something. I don't know. But yeah, maybe like a heat gun or something like that. Something, Would yeah, work. whatever, yeah, yeah, whatever you want to use. So that's the lighter that he uses. Huh. Yeah, a couple other examples, like so you can see even like some of the parts you can see like that's the cool. sharp edge on like the corner of that where it's not melted that he left that. So, yeah. uh, so there's a good. That's mix. a crazy effect. Mm -hmm. mm. I like this one too. I love that. It's really cool. That is cool. And there's a bunch of other photos he uh, of like other styles, not just effects like this, but he's used it for like different ways for like making a cape effect parts. There's another one where he had a build. Uh, I think it's like a wing kit, you know, like in the uh, Glory of Losers, how there's that part with like the wing Gundam, it's like draped in that yeah. cloth out in like the desert, right? Right, yeah, right. Yeah, build like kind of like that. So basically, using the plot plate, uh, the plot plate, and melting it like that to make a cloth effect too. It looks very much more realistic. Uh, so can be used for that as well. Crossbone fans, I want to take note of that one. <laughs> so uh there you go there's his uh his twitter page here huh. anubis and and i'll just man use my uh what are we doing what's this time it's not shout outs what are we doing plug. this time plug. plugs plug. there you go i'll use <laughs> i'll use my plugging time thank you 
I'll <laughs> good night. <laughs> <laughs> I'll use my plug time for uh, plugging that guy's Twitter account. Uh, awesome. You, I, I think people probably know about my channel if you watch the video, so there you go. I would hope so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Thank you, guys. Um, just for me, guys, real quick, childomecca.com, childomecca on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitch, you name it, it's on there. Um, if you like this hat, the skull, the skull Gundam hat, uh, you can get that on the Childomecca store. And, uh, man, watch, tune in and watch the stream sometimes. Uh, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays um, at 10 p.m. Eastern U.S. time. We go about two hours. Tons of great people in there. A lot of people from uh, this chat uh, is also uh, are also in that chat as well. So a lot of good times. Uh, we cover a lot of good topics and stuff. And you can see me work on this guy. So it'll be fun. Now that the construction's done, what are you going to be streaming? Um, so, well, are you going to stream painting and everything? Yeah, well, probably not necessarily the act of painting because mm -hmm. I don't know. I just think that's boring watching somebody you know stand in a booth and paint. Um, Agreed. But um, the masking and everything, um, because okay. the, the masking technique that I employ, um, I think is somewhat unique in terms of how it, you know, how I do it. So I definitely want to show people that. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously detailing the base and all that good stuff are coming up very, very quickly. So that's what I'm going to be working on today. I have to go out in the garage and cut some MDF to form the base and get that laminated with plastic and everything. So this thing will have a home. But uh, yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be a lot of fun. There's still a ton of work to do. So not a lot of time to get it done. So we'll see. But um, like I said last night on the stream, guys, no stream on Monday. I have a work thing on Tuesday morning. So no stream on Monday. We'll pick it back up on Wednesday. But uh, in closing, make sure to go donate to the Gumpla Talk fundraiser slash giveaway. Um, collecting money for um national alopecia arietta foundation um trying to do some good for the world so you can win some amazing prizes um go and uh and donate and uh win cool stuff so mm -hmm. and but, shout out uh, to thank uh, you. Oh. i just want to say shout out to alex in the yeah. chat uh, as always ah, for yes. moderating in there and there's been other you know as you said other friends of the channel yeah other absolutely other YouTube guys, I know Strider Prime was in there for a while, as well as uh, yep. Krosama, as well. Yep. A few other people, so. Yeah, Alex is the unsung hero uh, here moderating the chat. He does a lot of work in there, because I've seen a lot of uh, comments go redacted or deleted <laughs> yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah he's yeah. earning his money today, folks. Listen, and that's <laughs> so. one of his hobbies. He, he just loves it. Yeah, he does yeah, right. right. money. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. He loves <laughs> deleting comments. Thank you, Alex. Oh, man. Yeah, thank, thank you, you, Alex. Big time. So, oh, we got a smile. Cool. All right, guys. Uh, so, this has been Gumbo Talk 40. Hopefully, you found it entertaining. Hopefully, you found it informative. Um, I thought it was an amazing chat uh, with these two guys, as always. So, we're going to be back next month. Next month is November, you guys. It's our gift giving <laughs> show. Uh, we got to cool. start thinking about that. Oh, my God. The end of the month or the end of the year. So uh, tune in next month. Uh, no dates yet. You'll uh, probably know about it um, a day or two before we actually yeah. film, uh, before we actually stream it. But hey, it is what it is. These things happen. So yeah. uh, until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you, everybody in the chat. Thank you, Zach. Thank you, Josh. Uh, thank you, Justin and Simon, who couldn't be here today. Jim, as always, Alex in the chat. Um, watch us next time, and we'll see you guys. Bye. <laughs>